What is up everyone on YouTube? This is Bronisaurus here to do another reaction video with uh, my milk snake wonder, Sebastian. Like, how's it hanging there, Sebastian? He seems to be hanging in there just okay. He's doing alright. Okay, so today I'm going to be reacting to Pinky Tails, The Little Mermare. And credit goes to uh, Magpie Pony for uh, some of her uh, awesome work lately, especially this one. Okay, let's get to it. So excited about this one. Bye, Magpie Pony. This is One obviously ago, from the Little the Mermaid. Of Equestria, okay. There was a it's vast talking. cloud kingdom called Skyvale. It was the single largest Pegasus kingdom in the world, and it produced the weather for all neighboring Earth and Unicorn kingdoms. Hmm. The Pegasi worked tirelessly creating rainbows, wind, and rain clouds that would then be traded away in exchange for food. The city itself hovered over a great blue ocean so that it could uh -huh. use the water for weather production. Ships of food and supplies had to sail all over this ocean to reach Skyvale. However, over a short span of time, less and less ships were able to reach their destination. Surviving sailors told tales of mystical singing voices that would lure the supply ships to their doom, hmm. sinking to the bottom Siren of the ocean, smudge. crew and all. Scholars and skeptics ruled these tales as myths, denying knowledge of any known creature able to pull off such a feat. Unbeknown to the pony world above, an underwater city called Aquatica lay directly beneath the Pegasi. It was inhabited by all the creatures That's of the a new ocean, one on me. including the fabled merponies. The wise and benevolent king had forbidden his subjects to swim to the surface world, lest they be caught by the pony races above. He feared those ponies would invade his kingdom and take their resources for their own greedy purposes. This, hmm. however, did not stop the curiosity and adventurous spirit oh, of the king's look, daughter, Pinky. Portia. Against her, her father's like, wishes, taking up the she was to the surface to learn of the world she the was The main mermare role. One particular afternoon, and of course, Portia there's Fluttershy as the flounder of this role. Something special. Her faithful friend, I kind of Gladys, expected that coming. Nicely, despite her growing anxiety of being caught. Partio, are you sure we should go this way? Something Partio. might see us. Flandershy oh. caution, darting her eyes as she swam. Alrighty. Oh, you're just being a scary fan, Flandershy. Besides, I get to find something special for Modcod's birthday. Flandershy. Remember? <laughs> get it, Modcod? Because Cod is a type Mod of fish. Cod. <laughs> I know, oh, but God. you never know what might be lurking, waiting for us. I thought you loved all kinds of fish and animals. Oh, I do. I love sea stars and sea sponges. I and Nemo. I want <laughs> Nemo. Shark, but, but have you seen an octopus drop its prey? Well, I wonder if uh, they have sea there. snakes. <laughs> Sebastian yeah, would like to see show. those uh, yeah, no, if they happen to be the on here. Party L giggle at the silliness of her friends. And now Sebastian's a sea necklace. A sea a snake necklace. Smiling at the sunlight overhead. <sighs> Nothing like breathing in the dry, salty air. I guess that means the pony part of me still has airtight lungs, <laughs> and the fish part of me has gills. <gasps> uh, Does that mean I can breathe from my blank? Let's try not to question the logistics of what? my pony anatomy, Pinky. Yeah, let's uh, not. We're not going to be talking about any more anatomy functions in this uh, magical miracle of a story. Partio scanned the waves looking for... Hmm, he's not the only one saying big words whenever he wants to, just whenever he can think them up in conversations. And also, I guess it's best not to think about how anatomies of certain creatures works. 
especially in the middle of the story. A whole island that she wanted to visit in order to meet up with a strange sky dweller friend. Are you ignoring me? Oh, Is that you, darling? Is that rarity as a seagull? Cartiel smiled and swam to greet her friend. Flounder shy I, trailing after. I wonder what her place. name's gonna be on there. Cartiel, what brings you up here? <sighs> the other narrators warned me about you. They said if you get out of line, I can send you to the bad pinky corner. But, but I'm the star! You can't punish the star or the story won't continue! Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess you better behave, or Pound and Pumpkin will be very disappointed, won't they? You don't play fair! But that's really smart. <laughs> I like you. We're gonna get along just fine, you and me. <laughs> Yeah, what brings you up here on this glorious day? Verdity asked. Verdity was a seagull, and the first and only friend of Portiel's who lived above the ocean. She would spin marvelous tales of her travels, and show her little trinkets she had acquired from the ponies in the Cloud Kingdom. I'm here for a super special reason. My sister's birthday is today, and I want to get her something extra super duper amazingly special for Dick. Won't your father be suspicious if you bring her something from the pony world? Oh, please. He doesn't know his pearls from his jingle hoppers. I wonder oh, what her father's going to be Birdie like. Smiled well, and displayed an what character of her father's going to be years. played by could world. be a big man. Alright, let's see what I have here for your sister. I guess I just have to find mm -hmm. out. Um, emerald, perhaps? Or maybe or shining or armor. Or That's how these things usually go another. when it comes to magpie so, stuff. Winter or summer. It makes all the difference, darling. Ooh, that one, that one. Or mostly pinky tails, not just magpies. Stuff in general, or videos. But that's just a rock. Aren't all of these rocks? Well, technically I suppose they could be classified as rocks, but these are gemstones. Far more valuable than any washed up little pebble. I thought you were looking for something a little more exotic. Why bother coming to shore if you're going to pick something that can be found anywhere in the ocean? Well, that's uh, this rock looks just that's like cod pie sea. for ya, or mod that pie. The ocean floor. It's super duper special. She and pretty much prefers uh, the uh, can I have a less uh, can I, can gemstone like and more of a more like uh, an original Our rock started, stuff, was cut off when she or whatever. noticed a strange array of colors pass overhead from one cloud to the next. Ardiel had never seen a rainbow before, and its beauty had left her speechless. Oh my, looks as if the prince is at it again. The prince? Oh yes, the Pegasi prince mm. has a habit of taking the rainbows from production and flaunting them about when he flies. I guess upon see I guess upon seeing and hearing about uh, this uh, particular scene right here, Rainbow Dash is playing the prince role again like she did for Cindershy, where she played as the prince and Fluttershy was Cinderella or Cindershy in that story as they call it. And, and also it comes down to the conclusion of uh, the ship being confirmed between two uh, ponies, uh, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. Are okay, I'll just stop talking right the now. And bewilderment. Speak up, the stallion. Here he comes now. The blue pegasus with a mane that matched the brilliance of the rainbows he carried was flying fast and freely overhead, and... Do you mean to tell me the prince is Rainbow Dash? Again? Um, excuse me. Called it. This is Prince Dashy. Totally different prince and a totally different story. No, it's Rainbow well. Dash, and she was already a prince in Cindershy. Look, Called it too. I go around making everybody think that I'm a Flutter Dash shipper. Okay? It's Prince Dashy. And she, I mean... And she shit confirmed too. Totally Called it. Strike air free, air. you're out. Okay, so rare, uh, Birdity is a mare. Strike free. is a mare. But Prince Dashy is a stallion. Don't question my logic. We're all just playing around here. Genders mean nothing. 
as the prince flew. Wait, what was that? Okay. Uh, hold on. Here, genders mean nothing. So stop commenting about how Rainbow Dash is a girl can play with a, a whole range. Like she can play with a whole range of roles. It means she is a talented actress. A talented actress, might I add. Well, it doesn't say that, I'm just adding that in, just because I'm, like, uh, speed reading this. Not to mention, this is a comedy, for Pinky's sake. Yes, it is. And, Sebastian, like, just look at all the cares in the world that he's giving right now. Just wrap it around my neck uh, while uh, reacting with this to me. All that good stuff. But I mostly care, so I can just play along with this right now. Okay, moving As along. As the prince flew, a colorful rainbow would follow like a streak of light in the sky. Partio could only catch glimpses of the prince as he flew quickly from one cloud to another. She sighed and put her hooves to her chest, looking down at it in confusion. That's strange. I feel tingling inside. Hot to yell. Do you have feelings for the <laughs> and prince? And the pinky <laughs> dust ship confirmed. <laughs> oh, ridiculously romantic. Called out. Oh, That's four. Okay. No. You must. I guess I'm not too far above the water to reach. Love will find a way, won't it, Partio? Oh, I'm so excited. Tell you what, why don't you swim down and write him a letter, and I'll deliver it to the prince myself. You do that for me? Hmm. Of course, darling. What else do I have going on? I'm an annoying, squawking little bird with no social standings. Go on, hurry home with you, and be back with that letter before sundown. Okay. Partio squeed and dove back under the waves, swimming as fast as her fins would take her. Floundershy had to grip onto the base of Partio's tail just to keep up. Floundershy, Partio. Floundershy said shakily as she was thrashed back and forth in the names. water. Don't worry, Floundershy, I can do both. I'll write the letter, give Mod Carter a present, and then sneak back to the surface before sundown. You'll do what? A new but familiar voice called. Partio gasped. <laughs> Twilight's playing the crab in this role. <laughs> like, we already have a Sebastian in this video, and there has to be two, but at least the difference here is one's a snake and one's a crab that's going to be named completely differently. And stop mid swim. Inadvertently, Anyways. Swimming Floundershy off her tail and <laughs> yeah. into her crustaceous friend. Sorry, Dry Bastian. Try I said, swimming away from the crab Bastion. to hide behind Partio. Did I hear Try you say Bastion. you'll sneak back to the surface? Partio, your father has strictly forbidden you to- But Twy Bastion, you don't Twy understand. Twy Bastion. It's love. What? Um, hey, Sebastian, I look. This is what I named you out of. Kind of or from. Why Bastion? Well, mostly it's the original Sebastian crab. Anyways. Hey, how's the camera doing? Whatever's left of a head, I guess. Partio said with a shrug, giving up uncharacteristically soon. Whatever's left of a head.
take much. He's the pony I'm supposed to be. How oh, would you know? Just wait, I'm gonna see Did him. You, mean you have only seen Did him. Me to me. You haven't actually met him. And even though we're both too well, we'll be together. Are you crazy? It's the you best of two be worlds, uh, pretty much. Return to the aquatic and palace. Her cheerful disposition. Cranky doodle donkey as the father in this role. This show. Cranky doodle donkey. That sounds about right. That seems about right. I dig this. Placing the small stone in her sister's hoof. Mod Cod stared at it incredulously. Metamorphic. Combination of granite and cloudcrete. Commonly found in the construction of pegasi dwellings. Pegasite dwellings? But, but look how it's shaped! Doesn't it look like a sea? Look, what do I mean by that? Party I dig it. Trying to divert her father's attention. Oh well. It looks like a rock. Thank you, Party oh, L. I love it. It's best it not to ask. Wow, I, I... She was only trying to find the right gift for Mod Card, Your Majesty Crankyton, sir. Flandershy said, attempting and failing to help the situation. Party. I have told you again and again never to go to the surface world. They're a greedy, vile, untrustworthy race only out for themselves. If they discovered we were beneath these waters, mer ponies and creatures alike would be in danger. Don't you understand that? But Doodle Daddy, how do you know they're bad? Have you ever even met one? That's enough! You will swim to your room and stay there for the rest of the night without joining the festivities of your sister's birthday. Why, Bastion, you will guard her in her room. Me? Is there a problem with that? No, sir. No problem. Good. I don't want to hear another word about this surface nonsense ever again. King Crankyton exclaimed, pointing his hoof in the direction of the palace. Hardiel held back tears as she swam to her room in defeat. Yeah. While the uncertainty of the surface world was a danger to Merpons, there was a far more present evil lurking under the waves. Just outside Aquatica lived three dark and magical creatures known as the Sirens. Called Unlike it, Merpon, that, Conrad, I believe that's five strikes. strange magic that allowed them to affect the pony world above. Using their red crystals, they would sing captivating songs to pony sailors, guiding their ships into the rocks to drown them. Although some merponies were grateful that the sirens kept the land ponies at bay, King Crankyton feared their magic and banished them away from the city. Over time, their home became littered with the debris of the ships they sank, causing it to be named the Sunken Ship Graveyard. The sirens kept it themselves and did not converse with many sea creatures, only those who dared to enter their domain. Their ma magic allowed them to keep an eye on both pony and merpony worlds. Until now, their efforts to achieve their goal had been futile. However, the sudden romantic interest from the Murpony Princess gave the Sirens an opportunity too perfect to resist. A Murpony in love with a Pegasus. The eldest Siren, Adagio Dazzle, chuckled, <laughs> gazing into an enchanted bubble that reflected an image of Partio, singing happily to her friends about her love for the Prince. So what? Aria Blaze, the middle Siren said, uninterested. This could be exactly what we need to finally take control of Skyvale. I thought we wanted Prince Dashie's medallion thingy. The youngest, Sonata Dusk, asked, obliviously bobbing her head in tune with Partiel's song. Duh. The medallion is what controls the weather, and whoever controls the weather controls Skyvale. Oh, yeah. Our crystals, combined with the prince's pendant, will give us all the power we need to control every ship that dares set sail on our ocean. Why do we even bother sinking ships, anyway? The fear we collect from pony sailors is never enough to satisfy our hunger. So what makes you think adding more shipwrecks will do anything? We can sink them all at once by conjuring up the greatest storm this planet has ever seen. 
It'll be so epic that fear will be struck in the hearts of all pony kind. Except the mer ponies. Mer ponies don't worry about storms. Mer ponies don't even have magic to steal, Sonata. Yeah, they do. Do not. Do too. Not. Do too. Enough. Adagio screamed, effectively silencing the pair of them. I want you two okay. to follow that little mermaid princess. Convince her that she might need a little help getting the pony of her dreams for the right price. And what exactly are you going to be doing? I'll be conjuring up a spell, of course. Something we can use to trap that little princess into doing what we need her to do. I dream of living in the clouds and flying freely with him. Will you shut it already? What? It's Kashi! While Ponyel sulked and the siren schemed, Prince. Like, if I would have known Sonata was gonna be uh, singing along to uh, Pinky's uh, song, that would have been strike six. So, yeah, I'm just saying that. Stashy was in the sky. I'm just saying. Pay attention to a very important lesson. His mentor, Daring Duke, was attempting Duke. to teach him how to use the Sky Veil pendant to send storm clouds to the north. Daring Dashi, Duke. are you listening? Royal pendant, blah blah blah, big responsibilities, yana yana. Dashi said, lounging on the cloud with his hooves behind his head. That blah 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 is very important. You're the prince for Sky Veil's sake, and your father has given the pendant to you for a reason. You and you alone have the power to send the weather across the world. Thanks, Mr. Exposition. I think I got that. Daring Duke growled under his breath, then attempted to regain his composure. It's very important that you check with the Pegasi Cloud Keepers to make sure the right kinds of weather are sent to the right places. The biggest problem you're going to have is starting up storm clouds. What do you mean, starting up? Doesn't this magic doohickey do all that? Yes but only on a cloud-by-cloud -cloud basis. After you use the pendant to send them on their way, it's your duty to start the lightning and thunder for each I wonder if cloud. lightning dust is featured in lightning this. Lightning is so unpredictable. Are you sure you can handle this? Ah, quit your worrying, Dookie Doo! Maybe even for a cameo, Dookie Doo. When do I start? Right now, we're set to send the storm to the unicorns in the north. I'll go with you this time, so you can... Ready, set, go! Prince Dashi announced, zooming past Daring Duke in an array of colors. You've been using the rainbows again to show off? Oh, Dash, we've talked about this! Meanwhile, it goes the so waves, long with her mane. Kind of like how this shirt right here goes so well with uh, my uh, YouTube profile pictures. Anyways... Shy had managed to slip away from Ty Bastion's watch. As soon as she was sure she hadn't been followed, she swam towards the surface, hoping to see more rainbows and, possibly, a glimpse of her beloved prince. Floundershy didn't protest this time, knowing that it was imperative they swim as quietly as possible. Partio could tell by the flashes of light above her head that a storm was brewing in the sky. She frowned, knowing that a rainbow and her prince wouldn't be around for such poor weather. She turned tail in defeat and resolved to swim home when she heard a mighty crack of thunder, followed by a loud splash. Party looked in horror to see a slightly charred and wounded Prince Dashi ah. sinking in the ocean. It seems like she's gonna Party save Dashi's life. Prince she didn't Dashi's hesitate, life. Scooping up her prince in her hooves and attempting to keep his head above the water. Shouldering his weight, she swam towards the only piece of land she knew existed. Birdity's Island. By the time she reached it, she slumped the prince's body on the sand and tried to catch her breath. Wake up! Please, wake up! Partio whispered, unsure how to help him breathe. She shook him gently once, then again, pleading for him to open his eyes. You have to wake up, Dashi! You just have to! You can't leave me! That's not how the story goes! You're supposed to be okay! I was thinking exactly the same thing. Partio continued to panic and ramble until at last, Prince Dashi coughed and sputtered the water that had been in his lungs. Exactly. You're okay? Oh, Dashi, you're okay! What? Who? Who are you? So pretty. Dashi, where are you? Dashi, 
hearing to call from somewhere in the sky. Party up, gasped, and he dove back under the waves, not wanting to be caught. Daring Duke cried with a mixture of relief and panic in his tone. He landed on the beach near the prince and pulled him further away from the water. Who... who was that? That mare? She... she saved me. Hang on, Dashie. You'll be all right. Daring Duke said, pulling the prince onto his back. Mm. With some struggle, he took off in flight towards the palace. Hardyal watched the exchange just below the water a few feet away. Her mind was buzzing with the words he had said. I don't think he's coming back, Pardiel. Blandershy said, putting a fin on her friend sympathetically. He said I was pretty. He looked so happy. Even though he almost died, he, he looked at me like, um. oh, like he loved me. I can't go on without him, Blandershy. I just have to know what he thinks of me. But how? You don't even know where he lives. Uh, I guess that means you'll have to fly there. Partio and Flandershy turned around sharply to see where the third unfamiliar voice had come. Two strange Marpony creatures had joined them, both looking friendly and still frightening at the same time. Fly there? Well, that's the only way you can get to Skyville, isn't it? And it just so happens we know how you can do it. Who, who are you? Partia asked cautiously, Flandershy hiding behind her fin in the process. Or the sirens, of course. You have heard of us, haven't you? Well, yeah. Then you must know that we have access to some powerful magic. And we're totally willing to share it with you, too. But why? Follow us. And we'll explain this just way. might come out of the price, price though. though. Said, swimming away and expecting Partia to follow. I don't think we should do it. Let's just go home. But they said they could help. They said I could see my prince again. Floundershy grimaced in disagreement. Following her gut instinct, she slipped away from the princess and the sirens when they weren't looking. She swam as quickly as her little fins would take her back towards Aquatica. Come in, princess, Adagio said, beckoning Partiel forward. Partiel noted that they were in a particularly large sunken pony ship. Spells and dangerous-looking objects lined the shelves, nooks and crannies of what was once the captain's quarters. Whoa! You really have evil bats I wear, don't you, Anart? Huh. My fellow sirens here tell me that you have a bit of a problem. A Pegasus problem, to be exact. I... I want to be a Pegasus so that I can fly up and find my prince. Well, we can certainly help you with that. Adagio said, gathering magical supplies while the other sirens kept a close eye on Partio. You will? But why? I don't know what you've heard about us, sirens, but I assure you it isn't all true. We're merponies, just like you. We just want to belong. So you're not villains? You're just shy, magical mermaids who sink ships and happen to live in a really spooky graveyard? No ponies ever harmed. The sailors merely fly away when the ship sinks. Or use their magic to teleport somewhere else. Or play around in the water and scream like little guppies because they never learned how to swim. What? Huh. We only mean to protect the Way to burst their ponies. bubble right the there. The Pegasi huh. Buns. Poor sea creatures. And they could keep other ponies from trying to hurt and use us. So you can make me a Pegasus? Well, yes, but we may be good Marponies, but we don't work for free, you know. I don't have any money with me. Called it. Me, but I guess I it comes at a price. I guess, guess that's really number six. It's not like I'm hurting for riches, since you know I am a princess after all. No, we've been huh? gonna get. What would you want with money? Oh, I know. Maybe you just want to be friends. Is that it? I mean, if I were a misunderstood pony who was in free still, I would just want some pony to be my friend and maybe teach me how wow. to seem so dark and mysterious all the time. Uh, but you... And if you befriend the princess, well, then you've really got a good chance of impressing other ponies because uh, I mean, she sort of has a lot going on in her mind. Am I right? And I'm sure your voice. We want your annoying, never-ending, high-pitched, squeaking voice, so we don't have to listen to it anymore. Wow. Make it stop. Sonata wailed in the corner while Arya covered her ears. But if I don't have my voice, how can I tell Dashie that I'm the one who saved him? And that he was all wrong about Marponies and- You'll 
finger. And why do you sure. want something that's because annoying? I don't love you if you don't talk. I'm not trying to Trust say that it is, but the for them, that's annoying. Oh, well, then you'll make me a Pegasus for my Sebastian voice. doesn't care about uh, what's Our annoying and what's not, anyways. You have until then to get Prince Dashi to say I love you. If he does, you'll remain a Pegasus forever and live happily ever after. But what if I don't? Then you'll have to come back and serve us. Forever. Forever and ever? Yes! yes. Oh, oh, uh, well, I don't know. The clock is ticking, Partiel. This offer won't last forever. Partiel bit her lip and mentally weighed her choices. She heaved a sigh <sighs> and nodded softly. All right. Turn me into a Pegasus and I'll give you my voice. And if I fail, I'll work for you forever and ever and ever. I... Pinky promise. Pinky, what? What is that? Look, just sign this magic parchment and the deed will be done. Ardiel took the magic quill from beside the parchment and carefully scrawled her name and on the And they're not going to sing a Disney song. The <laughs> left the parchment, well, of course not. We can't take songs from Disney. Disney. They used their crystals to conjure a magical beam of red light. It hit Partia directly in the chest and traveled up to her throat. Wait! I didn't mean to say goodbye! She started, but the magic pried the voice from her body before she could finish. Adagio smiled, engulfing the magic with her crystal and directing a second beam of light towards the mermaid's chest. Sonata and Arya quickly following suit. In a red flash of light, Partia's body began to change. Flandershot shouted from the entrance to the lair. It's too late. Arya said with a dark smile. Let her go! Twybastion demanded, swimming at the sirens in anger. The king will be furious! Too bad! So sad! The magic from the siren's pendants let out a final burst of light, and Partia reappeared. Somehow in the transformation, her name and coat color had changed, along with her body. Her once bright pink complexion was now right, pale eh? white, with a yellow bouncy mane. That could have been suspected, otherwise I would have called number seven, number seven strike. strike. Before she began choking in the lack of oxygen. If we were you, we'd hightail it up to that little island before your princess drowns. This isn't over! Flybastion called, assisting Floundershy as they carried Partiel away quickly. The sirens giggled to themselves as they watched the trio of friends struggle to the surface. Adagio started, but stopped mid-sentence when she realized the... the voice coming from her throat was no longer her own. Wait. Oh my gosh. Oh no. no She's... It can't be happening. So... The magic wasn't supposed to do that. Oh great. Now we have to listen to that high-pitched whine all the time. Oh, God. This is the funniest thing I have ever seen. Like, ever. No. No. <laughs> Ah. Again in anger, oh, wow. The other silence having to stifle her <sighs> laughter in the process. Oh, what were you thinking? Twybastion raged, pacing back and forth on the little island while Partiel attempted to use her back hooves. The king is going to kill me. I am a dead crab. Maybe we should have brought him to the silence instead. What? Are you crazy? He would have been even more mad. I was supposed to watch her. Not only did I fail, but now she's gone and made a deal with the sirens? She's a Pegasus now! She's the very thing the king hates the most! I am so dead! Partia rolled her eyes and opened her mouth to talk, but no sound came. And, of course, you can't even talk now. How in the hay are you supposed to do anything if you can't even talk? Obviously, you had to promise something to the sirens in order for them to give you this spell. If the price... Well, but hey, I guess she could do plenty of things instead of talk. She could uh, write, she could do uh, hand signs, but of course they have hooves. They could improvise, like they have wings, maybe wing signs along with hoof signs. Whatever. Ardio scrunched her face and put a hoof to her mouth, trying to think of a way to convey her message. She brightened when she met Flandershy's gaze and waved her hooves to get her attention. Oh, I think she's trying to tell us something. 
You think? Partiel moved her hooves dramatically and changed her facial expressions, not dropping Flandershy's gaze. Let's see. Uh, I get to be a Pegasus for three days and have to make the prince say I love you before time is up or else I turn into a mermaid and have to serve the sirens forever. Flandershy interpreted. Called it. And that's strike number seven. I just keep getting strikes as they come along in this uh, fantastic magical miracle of a story. Portio smiled and nodded enthusiastically. Ain't that right, Sebastian? You got all of that from her hoof flailing? Why I don't you so. answer me? Yeah. Hm. A lot of good that. Maybe his voice was stolen from the sirens, and he could be a sea snake all along, transformed into a land snake. Or maybe in this world, animals can't talk. Well, oh, um, they have some ways of communication and other forms of language instead of verbal communications. Here I go with big words, being like a twilight wannabe. That will do us. Flandershy can't exactly follow you to Skyvale and interpret. Besides, I don't think ponies can understand animals. Well, not many of them anyway. Then what are we going to do? The only thing we can do. I'll have to go with Partiel to Skyvale, and you will have to stall the king until this whole mess is sorted out. Me? Stall the king? Unless you have a better idea. Partiel attempted for a second time to remain on her hoops, but continued to fail, falling back on the sand and sending it toppling over her friends in the process. I guess not, Flandershy said, shaking the sand from her gills. All right then, first things first. We'll have to figure out how to get you to stand on those things. Fly Bastion said, Partiel nodding enthusiastically in response. Meanwhile, Daring Duke and Prince Dashi were wandering the beaches below Skyvale in search of the mysterious mare who had saved the prince's life. Daring Duke was unconvinced that such a mare existed, claiming that she was a figment of Dashi's imagination. I'm telling you, Dukey Doo! -doo. Please stop calling me that. You know I hate that. That's why I do it. But listen, I know that mare's out there somewhere. There's no other way I could have survived this without her. Wait, is that her? Daring Duke asked in shock, pointing a hoof at a clumsy-looking pegasus who couldn't seem to fly straight. No, nope, the mare I saw was pink, but it looks like she needs some help. Left. No, 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 not right. Oh. Twy Bastion said in exasperation. He was hidden somewhere in Partiel's mane, near her ear, getting landsick from Partiel's amusing attempts at flight. Partiel didn't give up, keeping her sights set on the castle ahead. She didn't realize Dashi was flying to her aid, and before the prince could say a word, Partiel collided into him. A pair of them tumbled to the ground. Oops. Whoa! Are, are you okay, miss? Dashi asked, right no. himself. Partiel looked up and beamed from ear to ear. She had found her prince at last. She leapt from the ground and tackled him in a hug, catching the prince off guard. Uh, nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Dashi said, trying to pry himself from the hug and failing. What's your name? Partiel released him from her embrace and moved her lips to respond, forgetting that she was without a voice. The prince looked at her both confused and slightly amused are as we, she flailed her hooves. Are we and playing a game now? Her. I bet that's what he's going to say. You can't talk. Can you? It took him how long to figure that out? Twy Bastion muttered from Partiel's mane. Ah, uh, didn't so, call it. Partiel's over-exaggerated movements and infectious smile uh, struck a chord with the prince. It. This mare was so close to the one he was seeking that he felt drawn to her. Hey, you're new to Skyville, aren't you? Partiel nodded enthusiastically. Do you need some kind of help? My friend Dookie Doo and I saw you struggling to fly. Here, yeah. take my hook. We'll get you back to the castle so you can rest. I have an excellent staff who can make sure you're all right. Partiel's heart leapt and she reached out her own hoof to his. However, she failed to remember how to keep her balance on three hooves and toppled over again. Prince Tashi <laughs> laughed as he helped her back onto her wobbly hooves. You certainly know how to surprise a pony. Since I don't know your name, can I call you that? Surprise? Yeah. We didn't even attempt to learn your name, so hmm. we just named you. This is the pony you want to be with? Why Bastion whispered to Partio. Partio ignored him and nodded, happy just to be in her prince's yeah. presence again. She's definitely that a afternoon, bundle of surprises for you. That's why she's called Prince Surprise. Staff. Once he was sure, 
Prince Dashi offered to tour the kingdom together. He showed her how they made the weather, and how his pendant was the key to activate... You know what? This Pinky Tales has already gone on for a good chunk of time. I, I think I might just skip ahead to the romantic sunset part. Any objections? No? No objections? No. Cool. Maybe we can cut out that other song, too. Save some time. Yeah. Great. On with the story, then. One more hour. Yeah, why not? Let's just uh, do all that right now. Given the fact that I'm uh, wasting my time just uh, giving out my uh, comments right here while in this video, and uh, there's not really uh, much to it except uh, just skip to the interesting bits right here. Only one more Anyways. hour. You have to get him to say it, Partiel. Why Bastion cautioned from Partiel's mane. Partiel was too preoccupied staring lovingly into Prince Dashi's eyes to pay the crab any attention. The pair of them were snuggled on a blanket atop the sand of a beach just below Skyvale. Prince Dashi had wanted to watch the sunset with her and reminisce about the fun and frivolity of the days they had spent together. Partiel had had the time of her life with Dashi, and each day her love grew stronger. Twy Bastion was the only voice of reason to remind her of the situation at Hoof. Every passing hour, he became more frantic in his Bless attempts you. to get Dashi to say the magic words. Snake sneeze. You know, a few days ago, I would have done anything to find that mare who saved me. I thought I was in love with her. But I don't think I've ever met someone like you, Surprise. You're so fun and random. And those pranks you pulled? <laughs> Classic. Though, I doubt Dookie Doo will be very happy with you for a while. Uh-oh. Partio smiled again and snuggled closer to the prince. <laughs> this sunset's so really pretty, Dookie. isn't it? Dookie. Yeah, she said, pointing to the sparkle of sunlight on the water. Partio's eyes widened at the mention of the sunset, and her entire demeanor changed. She quickly pulled away from the prince and put a hoof on her chest, then pointed to Dashi. She did the same to him, trying to get him to understand. Oh, so now you listen to me. Wait, what's wrong? Partiel continued the cycle, touching her chest, then the prince, touching his chest, and then herself. Unfortunately, the prince wasn't catching on. You, uh, have heartburn? Partiel shook her head. You're trying a secret hoof shake? Partiel shook her head again, glancing at the sunset in panic. Oh, come on! It's not that difficult! Twy Bastion exclaimed from within Partiel's Okay, name. then you Who do it. That? Prince Dashi said, examining Partiel's head curiously. Why Bastion popped out of the hair in bewilderment. You can I understand you can. me? You could have understood me this whole time? Uh, I, I guess you have a chance to do that. Part of my princely teachings, duh. Oh, I still have a difficult time speaking to monkeys. But monkeys? Hey, so who are you? Well, I There's never. I to explain. Quick, tell Partiel you love her before the sun sets. I, uh... Partiel looked at the prince with wide, pleading eyes. Well, Although he didn't no. understand, he took the little crab's instruction. I... I guess I do love you, Surprise, or... You guess. Partiel, you have it? to be sure. The sun set over the water as soon as the words escaped his mouth. <sighs> Twy Bastion gave a loud <sighs> cheer in celebration. You did it, Partiel, you did it! But before Twy Bastion could finish his victory, Partiel vanished into thin air, leaving a confused crab and prince behind. Where did she go? To fulfill her part of our little bargain, of course. A new voice said as the three signs emerged from the sea. Their crystals were glowing. Yeah, called it. Pink he could have just uh, the water really him. been sure that he, he loved her. Remember, her. Attempting to fly to party aid, but was he not to be all like, I, 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 I guess. He said he loved her. That was the deal. Did you really expect us to be honest? If Partiel had read the contract rather than prattled on, she would see that she would end up our slave anyway. And why didn't anyway. you say it to her sooner? I mean, Partiel can still read and write, right? She signed her name on the contract. Is the printing literate or something? Hmm. Yeah, literate. We're getting off track. We have a little deal to strike with the prince here. Now that we know you're in love with that pathetic little mermaid, we're willing to bet you'll do just anything to save her. Just figuring everything out now? Your precious mermaid princess traded her voice to Adagio so she could be a Pegasus for you. Duh. 
Then it was you who saved me! I knew it! Prince Dashi exclaimed happily as Partiel nodded her head. His excitement was short-lived, however. Realizing the danger Partiel had gotten herself into on his behalf, he turned to face the sirens with a dark glare. What do you want? Your pendant, of course. Give it over, or Partiel will serve us for the rest of eternity as a taco cart. Taco cart. A taco cart. A taco cart. Oh, I always <laughs> wanted one of those. Oh. Suck that chance! Prince Dashi shouted, holding the pendant in the air and summoning a storm cloud. He flew to the top of the cloud and kicked aside, sending bolts of lightning to the sirens and the containment field around Partia. The sirens growled and the crystals grew brighter, deflecting the lightning and sending it back towards Dashi. The prince dodged and kicked the cloud towards the sirens to distract them. While they thrashed their hooves trying to dissipate it, Prince Dashi was flying circles around them, his pendant glistening as he did so. Soon after, a tornado formed around the sirens and sent all three of them spiraling into the air. She's Dashi almost like a party 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 party. Party. She's almost like a power ground. pony zap. Don't worry, I'll get you out of here! Doing all that putting his stuff. Against the bubble. Party and doing the same. The crystals! Destroy the crystals and you'll destroy the sirens! Toy Bastion called from the shore. Of course! Dashi answered. He flew towards the tornado, using all the strength in his wings to keep from being pulled into it. Oh, it's actually animated just now. Right. Dashi sent Instead a bolt of, just of lightning pictures. into the jumbled silence, hitting Adagio's crystal. He gave a victorious cheer when he saw a pink ray of magic escape the tornado. The magic flew directly at Partia, bursting the bubble that contained her. Partia splashed back into the sea. When she emerged, her voice had been fully restored. Prince Dashi cried, flying into her open hooves. I'm fine, but I think we have a big problem. Partio cried, pointing her hoof at the sirens who escaped the tornado, with smug greens on their faces, their crystals each glowing brighter than they had before. Did you but really think you had won, little prince? Is now there that you have restored my people, so we can unleash our magic on you. That pendant will be ours. Adagio announced with a cackle. <laughs> she and the other sirens turned their attention to the prince and began to sing. Their hypnotic spell was drawing the prince towards them, and he was helpless to stop it. Dashi, no! Partiel cried, holding him back as best as she could. My Bastion aided the princess, jumping from Partiel's mane onto Prince Dashi's back and crawling up to cover his ears. The siren's singing grew stronger, and it proved too powerful for Dashi to resist. He mindlessly pulled away from Partiel, and flew towards the sirens, holding out his pendant as he did so. I don't think so. Daring Duke called, flying directly into Dashi and sending him to the ocean where Partiel was waiting. She caught him, putting her hooves over his ears and making sure he was unable to turn back to the singing villains. Daring Duke had swiped the pendant from the prince long before he hit the waves. The sirens, undeterred, began their hypnotic spell on the duke. They soon learned, however, that their song was unheeded. Uh, Daring Duke had preemptively is wearing his ears, effectively blocking their magic. He unfurled a whip that had been wrapped around one of his wings, and with one mighty crack, he bound all three sirens together by their tail fins. Now it's my turn! King Crankington said, emerging from the water in a magnificent display. The crown atop his head was glowing, and from the pearl embedded within, a great flash of light shot magic through the air towards the unsuspecting sirens. He's so a shiny. A swirling vortex appeared before them. Daring Duke smiled and nodded, whipping the sirens around in the air for a moment before slinging them into the port. The sirens' screams echoed as the portal closed around them, forever trapping them on the other side. Other side of what? Didn't think you had Reality? Anything, Existence? You? Prince Dashi said, Probably. shaking his head to clear the trance he had been under. I haven't really been honest with you, your highness. I'm not really a duke. I've been hunting those sirens long before I got to Skyvale. I knew they'd be after the pendant, so I masqueraded as a duke in an effort to keep it safe. <laughs> well, so you're only like me for my pendant! Dashi said jokingly, hmm. shoving his friend. Very duke sighed and rolled his eyes. You're not half as incompetent as I thought. The pendant will be safe with you, Dashi. Though I have to admit, that portal of yours sure was useful. I thought merponies didn't have magic. Oh, we've had it, but I don't like to use it. 
No self-respecting pony relies on magical nonsense unless it's absolutely necessary. Where do they go? Flandershy asked, finally feeling brave enough to swim out from her hiding place behind the king. Ardiel smiled, knowing that Flandershy had been the one to alert her father what was happening. Ultimately, she had saved her life. Partiel swam into her and hugged her tightly, before answering her question. Can't you look on? Alternate universe assets will take care of them with alternate, alternate universe going twilight. Partiel, you are in worlds of trouble. When we get back to the palace, you'll be grounded for the rest of your life and... Please, Doodle Daddy, please let me stay with Prince Dashi. I love him. Partiel pleaded. Prince Dashi joined her, flying just above the waves. And I love her too. No, absolutely not. No daughter of mine will marry a Pegasus. As the king ranted on, a white bird swooped in and stole Whoa. the crown from atop the king's head. Birdity. His wig fell into the ocean in the process. Ha-ha! Birdity cried, Birdity. placing the crown on her own brow. My ship will live on! The magic Your of the ship. crown activated, and Partio's <laughs> things began to change. In a burst of bright light, she turned back into a Pegasus and jumped into the hooves of her prince. Satisfied with herself, Bernadette returned the crown to the king, still perched upon it in case he got any ideas about changing her back. You bald? You know, if you let Party L stay with the prince, I'm sure we can all forget that we saw that. Ugh. All right, fine. You can stay with the Pegasus. But if this true love thing doesn't work out, you can bet I'll be back here to take you home. <laughs> Don't worry, that'll never happen. <laughs> okay, everyone can go away now. This part of the story is just too good to share. It's rocks in the shape of the end. I guess that means the story is over. Unless you'd like me to tell you all the different rocks I found at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, please do. <laughs> That's all, folks. Well, that uh, came down to a satisfying conclusion. Also, the shippers out there probably wanted to see them. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> At the end, right there, when they're finally together, and the... Well, yeah. So, yeah, like... Double thumbs up right there on that project. And also I look forward to seeing the this next upcoming magpie project called Egghead and the Beast. I tried to audition as the Beast, but I guess they had somebody else do that. I'm okay with. I guess it's a matter of preference. When it comes down to whoever's making the project, but at least I had a really good run-in auditioning for that role. Alrighty. Well, how, how did you like it, Sebastian? Especially seeing the crab twi bastion and you get to see that you're named after a crab. Why don't you answer me, Sebastian? <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you in my next video. Brownie Source out.